You cannot trust your own. Put on the gospel arm. Each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls for danger, be never wanting there. For wanting there. Bless God. Bless Him. In a minute, we enter the Word of God. Your life will not be the same. The Lord will inject you with His fire. Your life cannot be the same. In the noise of battle, the next, the victor song. To him who overcometh, a crown of life shall be. Mm -hmm. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Lord, I bless you. I give you praise. I give you honor, God. This hour belongs to you, not to the hour of darkness, not to the powers of darkness. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, even as I bring your word to your people, Lord, prepare your hearts. And I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that you will arise over this nation, America. You will arise over Europe, over Africa, over Asia, over the nations of the world. And you will be glorified. I pray for the church of this land that you will bring the church to its right mind. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, be glorified. May I not speak from myself. May I not speak from the counsel of man, but from the counsel of God. I bless you. I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. Because you alone are God. You alone are faithful. You alone are awesome. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You, you're all welcome. God bless everyone. If you God bless you, please make sure you share the video. Invite your friends. You see, um, a lot of people are, are asking me the question, Willie Broad, why do you do this program? Awake America. Why, why do you do this program? Why do you talk the things you talk? Why do you preach on the, on the things you preach about? And, and there is a reason. The, 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 there is a reason. I, I, I actually wish I don't really preach on these things. But, but there is a reason. You see, uh, when a man has an encounter with God, you, 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 you are obligated to tell, to say what the Lord commissioned you to say. I won't say more than that. But of course, eventually I'm going to do a little video to tell you people why I do this program. Amen. And you see, I do not take it as an ordinary time. No. This is a time where there is the forces of darkness. You see, um, before Christ was actually arrested, when he you know, talking with his disciples, teaching them and all that stuff. They had seen great miracles just the week before he was arrested. And, and it came to the place, you know, they had seen great miracles, mighty move of God. In fact, that was a time when the city was getting to accept Jesus Christ. When he got into Jerusalem riding on a donkey and the entire city received him. You see, it seemed like, wow, they, they, they are now taking over the nation. Think about it. People took off their clothes to put on the ground so Christ can walk on them. You see, so it seemed like that is a time when the nation is really opening its, its, you know, its arms for Jesus Christ. You know, so, so the, the, the disciples could sense a great breakthrough. Hello? They were almost getting comfortable. Then Jesus began talking to them that the Son of Man will be arrested. He will be crucified. Wait a minute, Master. What are you talking about? Peter even rebuked him. Don't say that. You cannot. Not at this time when we have been accepted. Look at the honor. Look at the way they, they, they received you into Jerusalem. It was called the triumphal entry. You see, in those days in Bible times, when, 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 when generals of Israel, when they go out for war and they gain the victory, by the time they're getting back into the city, it is a whole procession. The entire city will come out to receive these generals. It was all, it was called a triumphal entry. An entry from a place of victory. An entry from a place of victory. People will take out palm fronts and will put on the ground for, for the generals to walk on. And all that stuff. So that was what happened with Christ. And he is now telling the disciples, I will be arrested. I will be crucified. Peter said, look, master, no, don't say that. In fact, I am ready 
to die with you. I am ready to go to jail with you. But Jesus said something to Peter. This is the hour of darkness. This is the hour of darkness. You am a child of God. God has given me a word for this generation. You see, we are living in a time of darkness. We are living in a time when, when, when people are celebrating darkness for light and light. When people are celebrating darkness for light. So they are calling darkness to be light. And they are calling light to be darkness. You see, that's the time in which we're living. It's a very complex period in, in the history of the church. And these are the things that gravitate to the coming of the Lord. Isaiah 5 verse 20 tells us, Woe to thee who call darkness light. And they call light darkness. You see, and, and, and that is the time in which we are living in. When, 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 when the obvious is becoming the abnormal. And, and the abnormal is now becoming the obvious. And you see, the challenge is, all this is going on, and the church seem to be quiet. Go with me to the Bible in, in, in Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. It tells us in verse 19. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. I'm going to read a few verses. Isaiah chapter 59. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 59, from verse 15, it says, Truth is missing, and whoever turns from evil becomes a prey. Hello? It says truth is missing. Truth is missing. You see, there are fundamentals of every society. There are fundamentals. There are things which, there are fundamentals to life. You don't need nobody to tell you this is right or this is wrong. There are things which are which nature would even teach us. You do not need to believe in God to, 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 to know that certain things are wrong or certain things are right. Nature will teach us those things. You see, when you see a, a, a little baby breastfeeding from the mother's breast, you see, mothers will tell us that there are moments when a little baby, still a little baby, one month old, two months old, Three months old. She's, she, she's getting breast milk from the mother. At some point, the little baby, the toddler, will bite the mother's nipple. Now, at that instant of time, that that little baby bites the mother's nipple, the baby look at the mother. She keeps eye contact with the mother. <laughs> Why? The baby knows what I've done is not normal. Still, don't still a baby, the baby knows what I have done it's wrong. So he looks at the baby. So it, he, the baby looks at the mother to see her reaction. To see her reaction. And oftentimes, of course, the baby knows what I have done is wrong. So there are things which nature will teach us. Life will teach us. Nature will teach us. You don't need a special, you know, whatever. You don't need to go to a special school to know certain things. So there are things which life will naturally teach us. Bible says, woe to those who have come to the place where they call darkness light. And now they now turn to call light to be darkness. So Bible tells us in Isaiah 59 from verse 15, it says, truth is missing. And whoever turns from evil becomes a prey. Whoever turns from evil becomes a prey. In other words, people now come against that person. Whoever turns from evil becomes a suspect. Whoever turns from evil, instead for people to rejoice, they want to come against that person. You see, there was this man that Christ went to and cast out the demon spirits in him at Gennesaret. When Christ met him, the Bible says he asked his name, what is your name? He says, I am legend. In fact, the Bible says, for nobody could pass that way. And when Christ stepped on the land from the lake, 
Bible says, and he was met by this demon possessed person. The man charged towards Christ and said, What have you to do with us before the time? Have you come to destroy us before the time? And Christ said, What is your name? He says, We are legend. I, I am legend, which means a thousand of us a year. And the Bible says, And Christ will build the spirit. The spirit and the left is man. Why should we not rejoice? One should be happy that a man who was mad, who had colonized the entire territory, is now delivered, is now saved. People can now freely go to that, to that area. One should rejoice. But the Bible says, and the people came. And when they saw that this man was totally delivered in his sound mind, sitting at the feet of Christ, what did they do? They asked Jesus to leave their city. You see, it's it, it, it is really, really amazing. It is terrible. They looked at Jesus, looked at the man in his right mind. This man had been possessed by devils. He had lost his future. He had lost his future. Nobody could pass that way. Except for the people to rejoice, they asked Jesus to leave their society. Yet the child of God, when you talk about ministry, it, it's always going to be a clash. Because there are satanic strongholds in charge of territories. And, and, and what, one would rather think, one would rather think that even the leaders and all that stuff, they actually mean good for the nation. But when good starts to come, that is when the greatest level of opposition arises. Bible says, truth is missing. And whoever turns from evil becomes a prey. The Lord, the Lord looked and, and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man. He was amazed that there was no one to intercede. So his own arm brought salvation and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in a cloak of zeal. Listen. So he, so he will repay according to their deeds. Fury to his enemies, retribution to his foes, and recompense to the islands. So shall they fear the name of the Lord, where the sun sets, and his glory where it rises. Now listen, for he will come like a raging flood, driven by the breath of the Lord. For he will come like what? Like a raging flood. But in another translation, it tells us, for when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God is going to raise up a standard against him. You see, I came to speak to the church today. I came to talk to the Church of America. And talking about the church, I'm not just talking of, of denominations and stuff. like. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to Christians. Because for there to be a revival in this nation, and when I talk of a revival, I'm not talking about people falling down and getting up. No, I'm talking about a revival that influences the politics of the land. That influences the educational system of the land. That influences the society. When I talk of revival, I'm talking of a system enacted by the Lord that, 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 that draws the parameters of what, is, of what is right, what is wrong, what is sanity, and what is insanity. The Bible says, and the Lord shall go out of Zion. When the enemy will come in as a flood, Bible says, when the enemy will come in as a flood, the spirit of the living God is going to raise up a standard. Now, the question is this. How does the Lord raise up a standard in a nation? How does the Lord raise up a standard in a nation? How, how does God do that? You see, Bible tells us something so important in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. It tells us something. It says, and I sought for a man who will stand in the gap and build the hedge. I, I, I sought for a man who will stand in the gap and who will build the hedge. You see, when the Bible says, I sought for a man who would stand in the gap, take note. You see, it, it is dealing, that prophecy is dealing with the nation of Israel. It is dealing with an entire nation. And God is saying, look, listen, something is going wrong. Something 
is going wrong in the nation, in the society. Values are falling apart. Morals are falling apart. The people were supposed to be the one dictating what values and morals actually are. They are not doing that. So everything seems to be falling apart. So God is saying, look, listen, I am looking for a person who will stand in the gap. Take note, God did not say, I'm looking for a bunch of people. You see, because it, it, it has been proven in every society, it will always take a remnant to raise a standard. Because one of the challenges is this. Most Christians, their lives get messed up by the society they live in. Their lives get influenced by the society they live in. You see, when you read Isaiah chapter 6, there is an encounter Isaiah is having with the Lord. He says, in the year Uzziah died, I saw the Lord also. And, and he explained the encounter. And he says, I saw the glory of God in the temple. I saw the seraphims, the angels of God, crying one to another, holy, holy, holy. That was the message Isaiah heard from the angels of God. And the angels of God were crying one to another in that encounter of Isaiah. You see, God wanted to expose Isaiah to his standards. Because Isaiah, as of this point, is a prophet. But he's a prophet who doesn't realize that his prophetic ministry has been contaminated by the society he lives in. He, failed, he, he did not realize. He has now picked up the perspective of the society he lives in. Hello? So many people have picked up what? The society, the, the perspective, the ideologies of the society they live in. You see, hear me, child of God, I, I'm talking about America, but I'm using America as a symbol of the nations of the world because whatever influences America influences the nations of the world. So you would hear me calling America all the times, hello, it is not a personal attack on America. Of course, the message goes to America, but whatever, whatever, Influences America. Influences the world. The challenge with, with the times in which we're living is that believers easily pick up the rhythm of the society. Let's talk about dressing, for example. You would realize that the church itself doesn't have a pattern of dressing, a pattern of, of decency. So believers in churches, even pastors, their dresses are being modeled. By what they see on Hollywood. Why does what they see on television? What they see in the music stars, what they see in the film stars, the film actors, they are dressing, their lifestyle is being modeled by what they see out there. It's because our values have been draining. We are no longer living according, we are no longer seeking to live according to the book. So our culture, the culture of the church is now being influenced by the culture of the society. You will see a pastor on the pulpit and you do not really, you cannot tell if he's a rock star or he's a pastor. You can't make a difference. You can't make a difference if, he's, if he is a celebrity or he's a pastor. You, you can't make a difference. You, you can look at him and, and, and what you see on him is Jay-Z. You, you can look at her and what you see on her is Beyonce. In, in everything. So, yeah, it's a serious problem. It's a serious problem. So the culture of the church is now being discipled. It's now, it's now being modeled by the society. So Isaiah is having an encounter with the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 6. He says in the year Uzziah died. I saw also the Lord. Then he goes forth to begin to explain this encounter. He said, and I saw the seraphims. The glory of God filled the temple. And I saw the seraphims, the angels of God, flying and crying one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What does that mean? That the God we serve 
is a God who cannot be influenced by any external factor. When you're talking of the holiness of God, you're talking of his identity, his personality, his uniqueness. You're talking of his separation from the environment he finds himself. When you talk of the, the, the holiness of God, you're talking of his separation from the environment he finds himself. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The heaven and the earth is filled with his glory. Now, Isaiah being a prophet of God, having this experience broke out in tears. The first thing Isaiah said is this, I am undone. Woe is me for what I am undone. Why? Because I am a man of unclean lips. Why? Because I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Isaiah's Christianity, his, prophet, his prophetic ministry, his lifestyle, as of that time, was being influenced by the society in which he lives in. It was a great contamination. Because God is not going to send the, the, the church to, the, to, to deliver the world when the world, when the church looks like the world. Today you, you, you see all kind of things. God is not going to send the church to deliver the world when the church looks worldly. No. When the church looks worldly, God is not going to use the church to set a standard. To deliver the world. To shine the light. Because the world, the church has, is now looking like the world. So God says, I sought for a man. I sought for someone with a different mentality. I sought for someone with a different perspective. I sought for someone who has got an encounter with God. I sought for a man who will stand in the gap and build the edge. Now, why? Something was going wrong with the society in the days of Ezekiel. And God says, look, listen, there is disorder everywhere. Something is wrong. I'm looking for a person who will stand in the gap. What does I tell you? One of the things I want us to be able to understand about God is this. God speaks in time. What does that mean? Every time God is talking, you can easily see why God is talking. There are things he is addressing in the society. Hello? Please follow me very attentively. Every time God is talking, it's because there is something going on. There is something happening. So every time God talks, it can give you an idea of what the challenges are. So God is never off topic. God is always on point. You see, when, when I, I told us other time, when 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 the kings will mess up in the Bible times, when the kings will mess up, the prophets will show up to address that matter. When the kings will mess up, the prophets they will they will show up. They will not show up to preach a different message. They will not show up. To talk something different, just to preach and all, to just talk, just to preach on something different on the Bible. No, they will show up to address that issue. Why? God always speaks in time. God always speaks in time, and so that should give us an indication what the focus of the minister should be. What the focus? You would notice. There is a fight going on in the society right now. There is a war. It almost seems as this present government, this present administration came in power with a mandate. With a mandate, not only about the fact that the homosexuality had been legalized, but with a mandate to disciple the children into that lifestyle. Hello? It, it's almost as though they came with that mandate. That is, it, it, it is almost as though that is their number one assignment. 
They've made trips to Africa. With that assignment in every nation they went to in Africa. The vice president went to in every country. She brought up the topic of homosexuality. She brought up the topic of the LGBTQ. In the schools today, there are bills which are being passed. That if a young child of about 14 years of age decide to say, okay, I'm a boy, but I'm no longer a boy. I want to go carry a gender change. There are bills right now which they are fighting on passing those bills that will permit that child to achieve what he, he or she wants to achieve even if the child's parents are against it. There are bills which are being passed to take that child from the parents. Your, your son says he doesn't feel he's a boy. He feels he's a girl. And the, dad, and the parents, they are trying to say, no, that's not right. They are trying to pass bills right now. They are trying to pass bills right now. That, that give the government the power to come into that family and take that child from the parents. You see, so, so that is the time in which we're living. That's the time, that, that, that is the time in which we're living. Everything is falling apart. Now, this is not a time for motivational speaking from the pulpit. This is not a time to tell people you will drive a Bentley. You will, I see God blessing you with a limousine. This is not a time for such teachings. Any preacher preaching on instead of such things, instead of addressing the issues of the nation, that preacher is gone off topic. It's irrelevant. So God always speaks in time. God always speaks in time. When Isaiah had the encounter and saw the angels crying one to another, holy, 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 what, what resulted was this. Elijah, sorry, Isaiah realized he was living an unholy life and it caused him to confess. So what were the, why, why were the seraphims Crying holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They have identified that Isaiah is having a problem with regards to holiness. So it, so it was not just an encounter. It was an encounter to point Isaiah to the challenges of his life. To the things he's going through. So it was not, the encounter would have been useless. If it will not address the issues Isaiah was going through, it would be a useless encounter. Useless. If it fails to address the issues Isaiah is going through. You see, I kept to speak to the church of, the, of America. It is time the church needs to be able to wake up and address the issues of the land. The church needs to wake up and address the issues of the land. I sought for a man who will stand in the gap. Who will build the hedge. God is saying, look, listen, I need structures to be put in place. I need structures. I need people that will be able to draw the line. They will be able to point the nation to the ways of God. They will be able to address issues which are wrong within the society. I'm not looking for a man who is eloquent. I'm not looking for a man who understands theology, who understands all these things. I'm looking for a person who can stand the gap, who can be the bridge between me and mankind, who can help to repair the bridges. God is saying things are falling apart. And my prophets are doing nothing about it. Things are falling apart in the nations. And my servants are doing nothing about it. In the days of Elijah, Jezebel was in control of the nation. And Ahab. They had bewitched the entire nation to worship Baal. But when Elijah showed up, Elijah did not show up to give a motivational speech. 
Elijah did not show up. So to talk about emotions, it will be all right. To talk about families, no. I, Elijah showed up to address the problem the nation was going through. And Elijah said, listen, O king, let it be known to you today. There will be no rain for three and a half years until you would realize that Baal is not God. Elijah showed up to address the issues the nation was going through. Many churches in America are going the wrong direction. Many churches attend their services. Attend their services. A politician will sit in and be and feel so comfortable and leave that church to still press on with a transgender agenda. And he keep coming to the church every Sunday. Why? Because he's not convicted of sin. Because the issues of sin are not addressed. Yeah, the child of God. It's a challenging time we are living in. It's a challenging time. It's a challenging time. Right now, what is going on in schools? What is going on in schools right now? You have drag, drag queen reading story time to children. Drag queen. A man dressed like a woman. Sitting in front of kids. I watch a little video of what happened in the school. A man dressed like a woman sitting in front of kids carrying in his hand a doll. That doll was a doll of a little baby. The, the, the doll looked like a, like a, like a, like, like a baby girl. And, and one of those kids, one of those children were ask, was asking the drag, the drag queen, what is her name? Asking the little, the little doll, asking the, the, the drag queen, the, the, the name of that little doll. And the little doll was like a, was, was like a female. What is her name? She said, no, not her. She refused to identify that little doll with gender. Is she a girl? The drag queen responded. She's non-binary. She's non-binary. Non-binary means she doesn't identify with gender. So you cannot tell whether it's a girl or whether it's a boy. That's the society in which we live in. They are now targeting the kids in school. So you see innocent children look up to their teacher. It's a man dressed like a woman. You see, we are living in a crazy society, in a crazy world. In a crazy world. We're living in a crazy world. A little boy was sent out from school. Why? The little boy went to school with his t-shirt and they said, look, listen, your t-shirt is making so many people feel uncomfortable. Your t-shirt is hurting the feelings of so many people. They asked the little boy to take off that t-shirt. The little boy refused to take off his t-shirt. They called the called the the called the dad. We want your little boy to take off his t-shirt because his t-shirt is causing many people in school to be hurt. And we've asked him to take it off and he says no. If he refuses to take him to take the t-shirt off, we will send him away from school. So come and take your son. So the, the man came and, and supported his son and they sent the son out of school. What was the t-shirt? What was written on the t-shirt of the little boy? Five words. There are only two genders. That's male and female. And the school authority said, look, listen, your t-shirt is hurting so many people. Yemi, I am going to go print my own t-shirt. There are only two genders. I'll make it seven words, male and female. Put it on that t-shirt in school. 
And they say, your t-shirt is offensive. It's hurting people. Take it off. You see, now these are the things going on in, in our society and the church is blind about it. Oh my God. If Christ tarry, give it 50 more years. If Christ tarry, give 50 more years. A generation will arise in America that will be totally off. Give 50 years. If the church is still quiet, And the pastors are they concerned how much how much millions people have in their accounts? You will be blessed Sunday after Sunday. It's prosperity. It's it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. And the society is declining. The values are declining. And when you point the attention to, to subjects like this, they don't want to talk about it. Criminals in white collar. They are the real. They, 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 they are. They are the real agents of darkness. The church of this land is in problem. It's in problem. It's in problem. It's in problem. God is saying, "I'm looking for a man," because there will not be many that will be willing to stand the gap. There will not be many. There will not be many. They will want, they will preach every other thing except the problem plaguing the nation. They will preach every other thing except the problems plaguing the nation. And we are raising a generation that will not know God. We are raising, we are raising a generation. That will not reference to the scriptures as the word of God. Hear me, child of God. A day is coming. If the church of America will not arise, there will be a bill being passed at the level of the Congress. Whether to still allow the statement on the dollar bill, in God we trust. It will become offensive to so many. Why should we write in God we trust on the dollar bill? What about those who don't believe in God? What about those who don't believe in God? Please take it out. Please take it out. Please take it out. Bible says we have stopped it. Instead of becoming wise, we have become foolish. We have become foolish. I suffer a man who will stand in the gap, who will build the hedge. I sought for a man. Isaiah cried out to God when he had an encounter with God. Isaiah never realized his ministry had been blinded, had been contaminated by the society in which he was living in. He had no clue. Until he was exposed to the holiness of God. He had no clue. Until he was exposed to the holiness of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he broke out in tears. And began repenting. And began confessing. I am a man of unclean lips. Because I dwell in the midst of a people. Of unclean lips. His lifestyle had been influenced by the society he was living in. His language had been influenced by the society he was living in. His dressing had been influenced by the society he was living in. His marriage had been influenced. By the society he was living in. Nobody saying nothing. We are, we are now subscribing to customs and traditions within the society instead of the word of God. Pastors are divorcing today 
remarrying tomorrow. It doesn't go. We have irreconcilable differences. The divorce and remarry. The divorce and remarry. And nobody is reading the scripture. Nobody is reading the scriptures. Where Christ is in the beginning. It was not so. No one is reading the scriptures. Which says. If a man. Puts away his wife. If a woman. Leave. Except for certain conditions. Must remain single. Nobody is reading the scripture. Nobody. Hear me child of God. I do not preach to be accepted. I do not preach to be approved by men. I do not preach. Stephen stood up. And was preaching the gospel. And they said stone him. Stone him. Stone him. That's the society we live in. Stone him. We don't want to hear that. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the father. They scream the more stone him. There are very limited conditions for marriage, divorce, and remarry. There are limited conditions. Limited. It's not in every situation. I know America will not, will not accept this message. If you haven't even accepted the fact that there are only two genders, I don't even ex expect you to accept this. Perhaps it's too much of too much of learning has made them to become dull and foolish. And the problem is the church. It's not pointing the people to the to, to the word of God. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. Oh, this pastor had a vision. A vision of hell. He went to hell in his vision. And he saw, he saw members of a church in, hell, in that hell. Looking for their pastor in hell. He, in his vision, he saw members of a particular church in hell. Looking for their pastor in hell. To kill their pastor in hell. So he asked them, why are you people looking for your pastor in hell to kill him? And the member said, pastor knew the truth, but never told us. Because he was trying not to hurt us. Because he was trying. He was afraid that if he hurts us, if he tells us the truth, we will leave the church. We will no longer pay tithes. We, we will no longer give offerings. And he will lose his finances. And because of that, he didn't tell us the truth. Now we find ourselves in hell. Yeme child of God. Yeme child of God. Yeme child of God. Yeme child of God. We are living in a challenging time. God is calling the church awake. God is calling the church arise. We cannot be silent. We cannot be quiet. We cannot be indifferent about what is going on in the society. We cannot be indifferent. God is looking for people who can raise the standard. God is looking for people at the risk of their lives. At the risk of losing all their church members. At the risk of losing all their financial support. But who will tell themselves, I didn't get into ministry because I was looking for offerings. I didn't get into ministry because I was looking for tithes. I got into ministry because I wanted to shine the light. 
I got into ministry because I want to call people back to repentance. Yet the child of God, God is not emotional. God is not an emotional God. He is a God of principle. God is not emotional. There have been people who have come to me for counseling. And they try to make the situ situation look so emotional. So that I will tell them, yes, you can do it. God understands. My sister, my brother, God does not understand. If you are disobeying the scriptures, know you are doing it by yourself. God is not emotional. God does not understand. No. No. He will judge the world by his word. Jude says, when I was to write to you about your com about our common salvation, I instead felt obliged to write to you about the need to defend the faith, to stand for the truth, right to the point of shedding your blood. For that faith, which was once and for all delivered to the saints, it cannot be changed. The scriptures cannot be rewritten. It cannot be rewritten. Pastor, what do you mean? What do you mean? My sister, I feel for your situation. But it cannot be rewritten. I was talking with a lady. About this lady who dressed very poorly in bomb shots. And she's saying, maybe she dressed like that because places are hot. I said hogwash. Even in winter, they still dress in bomb shots. The scriptures cannot be rewritten. He's a God of decency. I don't care what excuses you give. God will not follow in your excuse to break his word. Most of us, we have unrepentant hearts, uncircumcised hearts. We read the scriptures and we do a different thing. And we expect God to understand. Most of us pastors, we don't preach the word. We don't call the people back to repentance. I don't want anybody to go to hell on account of the fact that I give the person the wrong word. No. It's not your offerings I need. It is not your tithes I need. God is taking good care of me. I don't need your stuff to compromise. If, if I will get your offerings or get your tithes by sacrificing the, authentic, the authenticity of the word of God, then I don't need it. Because the day is coming. I will stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to give to him an account of everything I ever shared on this pulpit. Leviticus 18.22 tells us, no man is to have sexual relations with another man. The Lord hates it. Leviticus 18.22 no man. No man is to have sexual relations. Are we going to tell the people the word? Are we going to tell the people the truth? Are we going to dance? Just make like that. We don't want to hurt nobody. We don't want to offend nobody. Jesus Christ said something. If they hated me, they will hate you. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. You may child of God, I came to call the church back to order. I don't have the time. God says, I am seeking for a man who would stand in the gap and who would build a hedge. I am seeking for a man who will stand in the gap, 
who would build the hedge. And the Lord says, I found none. The standards of God are not the standards of man. God is not going to follow you in your standards. David says in Psalms 119 verse 128, I have considered, I have esteemed all thy precepts about all things to be correct. Anything contrary must be a false way and that I hate. Sincerely, with all love in my, with all love in my heart, I want to tell the Church of America, I want to tell the politicians, I want to tell everyone in the nation and the rest of the world, God is going to judge the world according to the standard of his word. The things we're doing today in schools with the kids, it is an abomination. And whoever is making such laws will not go free. Whoever, whoever is making such laws, we're claiming we love the people. They are the minority. The devil is a liar. It's time the church needs to wake up. Most of these celebrity pastors are friends to the politicians. Wake up and tell the truth. Wake up and call the nation back to order. Wake up and re-educate the politicians. They need to go back to kindergarten to learn the basic of a human society. They need to go back to kindergarten schools. To grade one, grade two. They need to go back and learn that the Lord made them male and female. Male and female. The Lord made them male. Indeed, spiritual kindergarten. The Lord made them male and female. Anything contrary is hogwash. I don't care whoever is fostering that. That person will be judged. Whoever the person is, I encourage us, wake up. This little boy was kicked out of school for saying there, there are only two genders, male and female. Today, truth has become offensive. The Bible tells us the truth is missing. The truth is missing. Truth is missing. And whoever turns from evil, they hate him. I want to encourage you. Wake up from sleep. Wake up from slumber. Church, come back to your mind. Believers, come back to your mind. I was talking with a believer the other day. Oh, the homosexuals are very nice, gentle people. It is an agenda. They are trying to sell their lifestyle by being gentle, by being kind. <laughs> Someone said, I like your jacket. You, you can have it. Send me your address. I'll, 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 I'll ship it to you. Hello? It's serious. Oh, they, 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 were the, they were the nicest people you will find. Hogwash. Nobody is nice who breaks the word of God. It's an agenda. They are selling. They are, they are selling their lifestyle. They are trying to attract you, to charm you into that lifestyle. Any person who can look at the word of God and, 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 and disobey the word of God has a wicked heart. He's denied the master. Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. And whoever breaks the hedge, a serpent will bite. Church, I came to encourage us. Wake up from sleep. Wake up from slumber. Wake up from sleep. Wake up from slumber. 
wake up from sleep. Wake up from slumber. God is looking for people that will still carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is looking for people that will go for his word. God is looking for people that will call darkness darkness and light light. God is not looking for people who are trying to get entrance to Hollywood. Who are trying to be friends with the ungodly music stars. Those are not the kind of people the Lord is looking for. You're trying to look friendship with the world. You make yourself an enemy to God. Wake up from sleep church. Wake up from slumber. The Lord is coming. Not as a savior. But as a judge. And any person. Whose name. Was not found written in the Lamb's book of life. It's condemnation. It's condemnation. The constitution may accept it. But even God will judge even the constitution. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Yes, God, talk to him. This day of flesh will fail. The arm of flesh will fail you. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Put on the gospel armor. And each piece put on with prayer. When duty calls or danger. Be never wanting that God is saying. Don't avoid to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Stand up. That's a wake up call to the church. Of America. The strife will not be long. The master is coming soon. This day the noise of battle. The next. The victor song. To him who overcometh. A crown of life shall be. He with the king of glory shall reign eternally. Oh yes. Shall reign eternally. Church, God is asking us to repent and turn away from our wicked ways. And live in holiness. Separate yourself from the world. Your model, your your model cannot be a person in Hollywood. It cannot be. It cannot be. It, it cannot be. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Help the church. Help the church. Help the church. Help the church till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. I encourage the church. I encourage the believers. God is raising an army that will not take no for the answer. An army that is not, they are not afraid to go behind the bars. Yeah, you can request a song. You can. Mm -hmm. Oh yes God, yes God, yes God, yes God Against unnumbered foes That's the thing, when you preach the gospel You will have un unnumbered foes They will come after you we are, we, we, are, we are ready We are ready Le sotale man takita la lucia we are waiting. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor. Each piece put on with prayer. The days will come. The days have come. That God will judge individuals. And judge politicians. And judge Christians. Who are trying to contaminate the name of God. The strife will not be long. 
This day the noise of battle, the next the victor saw. Mm -mm. To him who overcometh, a crown of life shall be the king of glory shall reign eternally. Lord, we bless you. I can't see your song right now. Hope next time we will play it. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Arise, Holy Spirit. Arise, Holy Spirit. Arise, Holy Spirit. Arise, great God, and I pray for the church in the name of Jesus. I pray for the church, Holy Spirit. Wake up the church. Wake up the church, Holy Spirit. And if you're watching me right now and you're not born again, you haven't given your heart to Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to give your heart to the Lord as you pray with me this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I belong to you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Please, you have our email on the screen. Awakeamericashow at gmail.com. You can reach out to us. We are planning some, 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 some outreaches in the month of June. The homosexuals are called in June. Gay Pride Month. We'll be doing a couple of outreaches in different cities and states. And we are declaring June is not for the homosexuals. It is for Jesus. It is Jesus Pride Month. So you want to partake in that, please. Send me an email to Awake America Show. Awake America Show. You will see the, you will see the email right there. Awake America Show. Awake America Show at gmail.com, please. If you, if you don't see the email, just write it down. Awake America Show, all as one word, at gmail.com. It's actually on the post itself, not on the video, on the post. It's awake A W A K E America Show S H O W at gmail.com. Reach out to us and may God bless you. Hallelujah. And please don't forget, you can join us tomorrow, um, 7 a.m. Central Time in our School of Discipleship. It, it will be on Zoom. I'm going to post the Zoom link on my page. You can join us tomorrow. 7 a.m. Central Time. We'll have a one-hour discipleship on Zoom. Amen. And my leaders, please don't forget, immediately after this broadcast, meet me on Zoom. Don't forget to come with your bread, your wine, um, your anointing oil. Amen. God bless you. God keep you strong. Good to see every one of you. Patrick Proofs, God bless you. God, see every, God bless every one of you. I can't see all the names. The grace of God be with you and keep you strong. I look forward to seeing every one of you next week, Friday, 8 a.m. Central, 8, 8 p.m. Central Time. Awake America. Awake America. Amen. God bless you all. Please, I cannot see all the names, please. So don't be bothered if I don't call your name. I cannot see all the names. It's disappeared on my screen. And, but I love you all. The grace of God be with you. The hand of God rest with you. You will not be the same again. I love you all. Bye-bye. That's it. Awake America Show. Thank you. Someone has written in the comment. Awake America Show. You want to be part of the program in June? You want to be part of this team? Please reach out to us because we will be doing Awake America conferences all across America. It's not going to just end at a level of broadcast. No, we will be doing Awake America conferences in physical locations all across the 50 states. You want to be part of this team? You want to join the team and all of that, please reach out to us. Awake America Show at gmail.com. I love you all. Have a great night. Bye bye. Now, leaders, don't forget, meet me on Zoom. And you all can meet me on Zoom. You will see the Zoom link on my post right now. You can join. Amen. God bless you.